Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Last time, we went through how to connect the 7100 to your PC with a USB cable. Now, let's take a look at the settings and adjustments we need to do something useful with that connection. Let's look at the settings that we need for operating in digital modes now that we've got this connected to the PC through the USB cable. So first of all, if you're going to operate in data modes or digital modes, you need to set the radio to data mode so that it's trying to get its audio from the USB port instead of from the microphone. So the way that you do that, up here where we have uh, the mode setting, we're going to hit the mode setting, and we're on USB, which is a little confusing because USB is upper sideband, and we also talk about USB as in universal serial bus for the USB cable. Not to be confused, they're two completely different things. So when you're on either upper or lower sideband or any other mode, AM, FM, etc., when it's just the mode name in this window, then that's voice mode where the radio is going to be getting its audio from the microphone and sometimes from the accessory connector. We'll talk about that in another video. To operate in data mode, we're going to touch the data button here. And now you'll see that the display changed to USB-D for data. The only thing that this changes in the radio is where it's getting its audio from. So now let's go take a look at the settings to make sure we have that set correctly. We're going to press the set button. And we need to go to the connectors settings menu. And I'll go all the way up to the top here. So that's on page 3 of 4 in the settings menu. So we'll go into connectors and then we'll go to the top of that menu and let's go through all of these. So first USB audio squelch and that affects the audio going out the USB audio port. If we have it off, which it is set to now and I, that's the default or open, the squelch will be open on this audio regardless of the squelch setting. So for example, right now, you're not hearing the audio. If I turn the squelch down, the audio comes back on. With this setting to off, it'll the squelch will be open for the USB audio regardless of the setting of the squelch knob. So we're going to set that like that. Accessory USB output select. This is what information is sent out through the accessory connector and the USB audio port. And it's set to AF, or audio frequency. This could be set to IF, or intermediate frequency. Again, that's some other modes we'll talk about in a future video, but you want it to be AF, and that is the default. Then we have accessory USB audio frequency level. Now, the default setting for this is 50%. This is how loud the audio is going out to the USB uh, audio port or the accessory connector. And this is a fixed level. So, again, this level will be set the same regardless of the setting of the volume control on the radio. And then the next one is accessory USB IF, or intermediate frequency level, this doesn't matter because we're set to audio frequency. So this only affects the IF frequency if you're using that option. Next, okay, accessory modulation level or mod level. This is the level of audio coming into the radio through the accessory jack. We're not using that right now, so it doesn't really matter. The default's 50%. It could be anywhere, but we're just going to leave it there. Data mod level or modulation. This is the level for uh, audio coming in through the data jack. That's a separate jack on the back of the rig. Again, we'll talk about that another time. The one we want right now is USB modulation level. So this is the level of the input audio, basically the equivalent of your microphone gain for audio coming in from the USB audio port. And again, the default is 50%. We're going to just leave that at 50% right now. 
The next one, data off modulation. This is where does the rig get audio from when the data mode is off. So back on that other display, when the dash D is not there, where's the rig getting its audio from? The default setting is mic, comma, accessory. So this means that the rig is taking audio in from the microphone and also from the accessory jack. So if you had something plugged into the accessory jack putting audio in and you have the microphone connected, it's going to take the audio from both of those. We could set it to just mic if we want it from the microphone. And again, that's for voice modes, so it doesn't really matter. Right now, I'm going to leave it at the default, which is both mic and accessory jack. Let's go down to the next page. This is the one that's really important. This is data mod or data modulation. So where does the radio get its audio from when you're in data mode, when the dash D is on that display? You can set it to be the microphone, and you might use this, for example, if you were going to use uh, some sort of a analog audio interface and you actually plugged it into the mic connector instead of the microphone. So you might want this. Accessory means it's going to get it from the accessory jack on the back of the radio. Again, another topic. Mic, comma, accessory means it'll take it from either the mic or the accessory jack. And then finally, USB. Now, the default on this particular setting is actually the accessory jack. So if you plug in the radio through the USB port and you don't change this setting and you're trying to use uh, WSJT or um, any of the other ham, you know, the ham radio data programs for your PC, you're going to get no modulation. So this needs to be set to USB audio. And then external keypad, we don't need to worry about that. CIV, this is for computer interface dash five, which is what that stands for. This is the computer control serial port. So that's the other connection that gets made when we plug the USB port in. And pretty much the defaults for this are fine. The baud rate that you button. need... And again, just to recap here, we'll go back up. We want to make sure that the audio, the output select for USB is audio frequency. That's the default. The squelch we want to turn off, although if you have the squelch off on the knob, then you're probably okay. Um, USB audio frequency level, we're going to leave that at 50%. IF doesn't matter. The uh, accessory and data mod levels don't really matter. The USB modulation level, we're going to leave that at 50% for now. Data off modulation, again, doesn't matter because we're going to be working in data mode. And then data modulation, we want to make sure that one is set to USB. And then the CIV, again, we're going to leave these all at the default. Auto baud rate, 88 hex for the radio and the transceive and the antenna one really don't matter. So that's it. Those are the important settings in order to use your radio with a data program over USB from your PC. I've got my radio turned around so that I can get to the back of it here. And there's one important accessory we're going to be using here because we're going to be setting our transmit audio levels and adjusting them. So... I have here a 25 watt dummy load. I picked this one up at a ham fest. Um, I've got a few links to some 25 watt and a couple other powers that are in the description, but this is an accessory that uh, every ham shack should have, and this allows you to test transmitters and set audio levels and do other kind of diagnostics without putting a signal out on the air so that you're not interfering with other people. So we're just going to disconnect the antenna and then we're going to screw that in. So now we have a dummy load and we can adjust our audio levels and do all kinds of testing without worrying about interfering. So, with our dummy load connected, 
All of those annoying FT8 signals are gone. They're not really annoying, but they can be if you listen to them long enough. So since we're using a 25-watt dummy load, I am going to make sure that I set my power down, and that's with the mic slash RF power button. And you don't really need very much power for setting your audio level, so I'm going to set it down to about 10 watts here. 10%, so that should be plenty for any of the adjustments we're going to be doing. So we need to adjust the audio coming into WSJTX, and it says here we're going to use the receiver gain and or you can use either one or a combination of the two, or the computer's audio mixer controls, and we're going to set the background noise level so that it's around 30 dB when no signal is present. And you can probably hear in the background here, if you remember, we hooked up the dummy load, so I have no signals present because I have no antenna hooked up. And the 30 dB it's talking about is right here, this green bar. So 30 dB is down here, so I'm a little bit loud. So I'm going to do this just with the computer controls, and I'm if I was going to do it on the radio, when we were in the settings menu and we looked at the USB AF output, that would be the setting that we would change if we wanted to change this. So bear with me while I get the sound settings opened up again, and we're going to go down here to the input, and I actually want to adjust it for this USB 2 audio codec because that's my microphone. So I'm going to go to device properties again and then here's volume and if I turn this down you'll see that the green bar down here is going down and up as I adjust that. So I can adjust it all the way down. So I'm going to move this up so that I'm right about at 30 dB 31. I think that's probably close enough with no signals. So now we've set the input volume coming into WSJT. So that's where we want to be. Next thing we need to change is our transmit level. And for that one, and if we go down a little bit further here, transmitter audio level, and it tells you to click the tune button, which is right over here and we'll generate a steady audio tone and then we're going to listen to the tone on the radio's monitor. I'll show you that in a second. To make sure it sounds okay, there's no glitches or it doesn't sound like distorted or anything like that. And then we're going to adjust the power slider. That's this slider right over here on the right edge of the screen. And we're going to move that up and down to get the, and we're going to move it until the RF output from the transmitter just falls a little bit. So basically that tells us that we're just below the maximum drive level that we can do. So let's look back over here at the radio. And the first thing I'm going to do is I want to have my power meter so I can see power and I can see my limiter control. So I'm going to press and hold the signal strength meter and that brings up all my meters and then now I want to turn on the monitor so I can hear this in the radio speaker so I'm gonna go set we were in connectors we're gonna go up here to function and I'm gonna turn monitor to on monitor level is 50 percent that's fine we're gonna leave that there so now when I transmit through the computer I should hear what I'm sending to the computer or what I'm sending to the radio uh, on the speaker out of the radio. I did try setting this earlier with my output power just set down to about 10 watts. I've got a 25 watt dummy load and I found that at 10 watts it the meter movement was so small that when I set it and then I turned the power back up later to go to higher power my audio output was really low, and I think it's just because it was so little meter movement, I couldn't really adjust it very accurately. So I'm going to try this at 50% power, which would be 50 watts, but 
my 25 watt dummy load I'm sure it'll be fine at 50 watts for just a few seconds so once again I'm gonna push the meter here to get all the meters because I really need to see power and I kinda like to see ALC and my current going into the transmitter at the bottom so we're gonna click on tune here and we're just about at 50 watts so let me reduce the power bar here Oop, and there you see it going down and I'm gonna go till it just reduces a little bit right there and that should be good so now I'm not fully driving the transmitter I backed the audio off just a little bit and we're gonna leave it there and see how that works okay in the settings we're going to set the split operation to rig and that's because the IC7100 can do split and WSJT takes care of all the details for you what this does is when you're in split mode if you copy a signal that's way up here near 3000 Hertz or way down here at five or six hundred Hertz it's going to put the radio in split mode well it actually puts the radio in split mode anyway but what it'll do is it's going to set the transmit frequency different from the receive frequency and it's going to do that so that it can keep your audio on transmit right here in this 1500 Hertz to 2000 Hertz sweet spot range and the reason is because most ham radios are not perfectly linear and perfectly even across their entire audio band so the audio isn't as good transmitted way down at the bottom or way up at the top and for normal voice that's not really a big deal but for things like uh, FT8 and other digital modes it's important that the audio levels and the audio frequencies and uh, be be very good and that the distortion be minimized so we're gonna set this to split mode and hopefully I'll get an example here where I can show you how this works all right we've gone up on 20 meters We've got all of our modes and audio levels set. Let's see if we can make a few contacts. Okay, we got N9 AMI, and I've got the software uh, WSJT set up to auto sequence, and you can see we're transmitting on 174.5 uh, because he's above 2000 hertz here on the screen. So what it's doing is it's adjusting the transmit frequency so that my audio will be here but the tone will actually end up here for him and we just completed the contact with him and then we got the request I have it set up to prompt me to log it so we're gonna log our contact with him on 20 meters and we'll say okay and we've just logged a contact yeah we did two tries this, this other station is like right over the top of uh, of him at any rate I think you get the idea and uh, you can have a lot of fun playing around and 20 meters is pretty crowded right now well that's it for this time I used WSJTX for the settings and examples because FT8 is incredibly popular right now there are many other data modes like RTTY PSK 31 MFSK and so on there are also many other data mode programs like FL Digi, Ham Radio Deluxe, and many others. The concepts for setting your audio levels will be similar for all of those programs and modes. 
there should be some information in their user's guides to help you get the levels adjusted properly. Also, check out the description for this video for links to a few different dummy loads that you can try for your radio. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, I'd appreciate a click on the like button. If you're enjoying the channel, please consider clicking the subscribe button, and you can also click on the little bell icon to get notified when new videos are released. You can check out the companion website for this channel at a to z.tech. You'll find a link to that in the description as well, and the other links that I mentioned. I'm always happy to see your comments if you have any questions, corrections, or other thoughts. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.